Welcome to another episode of Inflection. I am Brian Berletic. Joining me as always is Angelo Giuliano. And today we are going to be talking about the Solomon Islands. Uh, we remember seeing about this in the news, the, the fires, the you know Chinatown in the capital being attacked and destroyed. And we saw a lot of narratives on both sides. And we heard a lot of people saying, look, the Solomon Islands, they're standing up to to Chinese expansionism. Uh, and we're going to show you that that is not true at all. We are going to show you why those people were in the streets. Uh, and I, I wanna give a lot of credit to Angelo. He is the one who set up all, all, like almost all of the links and really helped flesh this out so that we could understand it better. So uh, Angelo, you wanna, you wanna kind of give us a little bit of an introduction on, on what has happened and why, and we could get into the details. Uh, so recently we saw some uh, very big riots in Solomon Islands and uh, most of the rioters, they came from Malaita uh, province and, um, and I, did, I did some digging. Uh, uh, Wait, just, just one, one, one yeah. moment, Angela, just so we can show. This yeah. is China. This is the uh, east coast of Australia. And then we're going to zoom in on the Solomon Islands. Uh, the capital is here. And... Malatta is right here, uh, where these rioters came from. So they actually cr crossed over to, the, I guess you would say, the main island and the capital to wreak havoc. Con continue. Sorry about that. Mm, no, no. I think it's important for people to understand the the, the context. Uh, Solomon Island is uh, the population is uh, seven hundred thousand people, so it's very small. It's close to Australia. It's extremely, extremely poor. We are talking about the level of the poorest countries in Africa. So here, uh, what happens is that uh, Sol Solomon Island is one of the very few countries in the world that, that, that were still recognizing Taiwan and not China. So they had a, a diplomatic relationship with Taiwan until 2019. So what happened in 2020 is that USAID came in and spent 25 million US dollars and they gave it to Malaita province. So can you imagine now you have Malaita province getting all this money? So you have uh, uh, the PM of this, um, this province. His name is Sudaini. He's strangely, extremely anti-Chinese. He doesn't want Chinese businessmen to be on his province. And he, wa he doesn't want uh, Solomon Islands to, to break the, the relationship with Taiwan. So now you have, uh, you know, these days you had like massive, I mean, uh, I don't know, but, uh, probably, I mean, hundreds, maybe maybe thousands rioters. I mean, just crossing and going to to the main island uh, to do writing and to burning down like uh, Chinese shops and and um, you know and, and they want to, to uh, they wanted to overthrow the government. Uh, yeah. I mean, basically, they went to the parliament and they wanted it was a it was a coup attempt. So here, yeah. that's a, that's a very good example on on the whole meddling and and it's very easy. You know, it's a it's a uh, it's how you can put animosity between between uh, different et ethnic groups, because this is uh, you know those problems between islands. It's not nothing new, you know they they've had riots over and over. So they they were by funding one side, they were, it was a good way just to exacerbate divisions. Now I'm asking, I mean I'm asking, I mean, what does it do to to a country like this to to go against China? When when uh, when actually China is uh, sixty percent of their exports goes to China, uh, they, they they couldn't even put actually Taiwan on the map. I mean, really, it's it's just ridiculous, you know. So you had people there on Solomon Island, uh, some pro Chinese, some pro China, and so pro Taiwan. It's just ridiculous. So you you can you can tell here the the whole brainwashing, uh, just people being manipulated. Uh, the danger here is that uh, so there was a vote of non confidence. It didn't go through. You know, so the coup attempt didn't go through, uh, but then there's a there's a problem of a potential secession, because uh, the PM of uh, uh, Malaita Malaita province wants to do secession. So that's that's dangerous. So you can see how much I mean, 25 million US dollar uh, from USAID, how much damage it can do to a very poor country like uh, Solomon Island. Uh, exactly. That was, a, that was a perfect summary that, that says it all, Angelo. And uh, we'll, we'll go through article by article to really flesh out the details so people have a very deep understanding of this issue of a 
a place a lot of people didn't really know anything about uh, where it was on the map or, or why there's all of this uh, all of this tension surrounding it how how it has become kind of in the middle of this tug of war uh, someone was just talking about Nicaragua, I saw in the comment section. Yes, Nicaragua cuts ties with Taiwan in favor of Beijing. This is reality. Th uh, China is going to surpass the United States. And these countries that were coerced into recognizing Taiwan, um, it's clearly not serving their own best interests by agitating China, this, this large and growing economy, soon to be the largest economy. The world is changing and even these countries under extreme pressure and facing the danger of US destabilization as Angelo just said, a coup attempt, uh, death and destruction in your streets, they are still choosing to do business with China. People should ask themselves why that is. Uh, so Nicaragua cuts ties, this is just, just this year, just recently. And uh, as you said, Angelo, the Solomon Islands in 2019 and they have been paying a price for that ever since with the riots, the most recent, uh, the most recent example. Now, this is an ABC uh, Australia article. Solomon Islands joins China's Belt and Road Initiative as leaders meet in Beijing. And we were talking about this right before the show, Angelo, how, how much the Solomon Islands depends on just straight up foreign aid, something like it, it, year to year and, and through certain times, it can be anywhere between 50 and 60% of the Solomon Islands government budget comes from foreign aid. This is not a sovereign country. If uh, more than half of all the money you spend is coming from someone else, there's always strings attached. What is China offering the Solomon Islands? If you go through this article, they're talking about number one, tourism. It's a, it's a no brainer. There's so many people in China. Uh, a lot of them are improving in the term in terms of economics. They have money to travel. They want to travel, and they will come to the Solomon Islands in huge numbers. And they will lift that. They will lift that country up. People will make money selling them things, accommodating them, bringing them around. Transportation. There will be infrastructure that you can invest in and justify the investment in to to accommodate all of this. So there's that. And then uh, education, training, and building up industrial infrastructure so that the Solomon Islands has more things that they can trade. Uh, Angela, you were talking about trade. This is the trade the Solomon Islands is involved in, the exports in 2019. Look at China. Where's the US? Can you anyone see where the US is? It's right there in the corner, this tiny dot in the corner. Where is Taiwan? Right there, 1.8%, 1, 1. very small. Uh, trade is is real trade is something you're selling things and you're making money and you're and also your imports this is real this is not just foreign aid this isn't just someone handing you money this is actual economic activity and uh, this makes sense because australia as you saw on the map it's so close to australia proximity that makes sense uh and china just by size of its economy and the fact that it's also in this the same sort of region uh, so, yeah, at face value, they're going to try to tell you that uh, they're, re they're rising up because China, uh, that everyone is up upset. They wanted to keep recognizing Taiwan. Why would ordinary people want to recognize Taiwan? Angela, can you think of any reason why people in the Solomon Islands would be better off recognizing Taiwan than mainland China? Well, it's just ridiculous. Uh, uh, well, keep in mind that there are uh, 14 countries left that are still recognizing Taiwan. But, you know, be, uh, except a few countries, there are sizable countries like Haiti, Guatemala, Honduras. Those are sizable countries, you know, but, but still very small. The rest are all banana republics. And is the, the Vatican. So that makes it, uh, you know, 0.5% of the world population. I mean, it's extremely... Uh, it's just nothing, and it's, a, it's just an anomaly of history. I mean, you know, it's just it's just a, a few banana republics still recognizing Taiwan, and it's going against their interest. So now I, I, we we expecting more to follow. You know, and now you have a, in Honduras the leftist government. It's just a matter of time because China is bringing much more business. Is it's important to know that uh, China is not. I don't see China actually going to corrupting, uh, you know, uh, officials and so on. It's just bringing business. Uh, in, in the case of Nicaragua, you have to imagine there's a, in the pipeline, there's a huge project. I mean, it's a game changer. Uh, it's a 
uh, Nicaragua Canal, which actually would be an, an alternative of the Panama Canal, which we, uh, would be actually much bigger. You know, like now ships are larger and it's a difficult for Panama Canal to go through. It would, like, it would like, completely eclipse Panama, Panama Canal. And, and imagine, I mean, it would, it would be a big problem for the U.S. Now you, have, you would have a canal competing with the, uh, with the Panama Canal and Chinese doing that. You know, the investment, the size of the investment is 50 billion U.S. dollar. I don't know how many jobs. I mean, we, we might be talking about uh, 100,000 jobs. It would be a game changer for Nicaragua. So why not going into this direction for Nicaragua? You know, it's, it's a no-brainer. And, and, and more, yeah. more countries will follow. You know, uh, I'm expecting Honduras, you know, that uh, some might not follow Haiti. I mean, why Haiti would not follow? Because Haiti is not a sovereign country. Haiti is a, is a U.S. province. It's been... You know, whenever there's a government that is actually working for its people, there's a coup. Uh, so it's just an anomaly in history. It's an anomaly. You know, it's just a, it's just a matter of time. Wait, wait, you know, maybe only the Vatican would, would be the only one left. You know, at some point. Yeah. So uh, all all really good points. And um, but let's just continue. Let's continue on with this. The uh, the current prime minister of the Solomon Islands. He used to be a guy that people would have considered pro-Taiwan. He was very pro-Taiwan, but it's just a, a reality of where the world is right now. Uh, of course, all of these politicians, they were being paid off. Uh, uh, on one hand, they were being paid off. On the other hand, they were being threatened. Uh, you can choose. Take this money or we will burn your country to the ground. So he had been going along with that for the, the, the longest time. But uh, let's maybe let's play this video here. Let's listen to the prime minister of the Solomon Islands, why he decided it was time to choose Beijing over Taipei. China and the Solomon Islands established formal diplomatic relations on September the 21st. And within one month of that, you came to China to visit. I understand this must be a very important decision for your country and of course for uh, people in China, for China. so. People must be curious, how did you come to make that decision? Yes, yeah, you say it is a very, very important decision. It uh, took us 36 years to make. And as a member of the United Nations, we are duty bound to acknowledge and recognize Resolution 2758 of 1971. China is a growing, powerful economy. One day, it will overtake the United States as the biggest economy. That's a fact, a reality that every nation of the world need to appreciate, and especially developing countries that are aspiring to, to move forward in development. You cannot, you cannot disregard the important position, economic position, that uh, the People's Republic of China uh, has in the in, in the global global so those are some of the reasons and we made the decisions we we I believe it is is the right decision is the correct decision to make and uh, we're just moving forward seeing that China is a very very important uh, economic power in the world and all sensible leaders in the world must acknowledge the existence of, uh, of, of China and relate to it in a meaningful way like we do now so, I mean, let's just think about that. I mean, you're you're out of your mind and you live in a fantasy world if you're going to try to recognize Taiwan uh, instead of China. The actual, like even the United States pressuring the Solomon Islands to recognize Taiwan does not recognize Taiwan. People should remember that. Australia, the UK, all of Europe, none of them recognize Taiwan. They have They recognize the one China policy so that they can get involved with the Chinese economy. Now, they didn't do it to help China. They did it to try to take over China's economy, and they failed. And now they're trying to walk back from their position. But they're denying countries like the Solomon Islands the opportunities that China offers them by forcing them to take this otherwise completely irrational uh, decision to recognize Taiwan. Now, Taiwan had been giving the Solomon Islands aid for years and years and years. Uh, but just aid, they're not helping the Solomon Islands stand up on their own. Australia and the U.S. are all doing the same thing. Now, 
Uh, I want to point out this article here. This is from the Diplomat. This is a this is a pro Western anti China publication. If you had to if you had to describe it, you know, pro or anti, that's what it is. U.S. aid pledges to pro Taiwan Solomon Islands province raises eyebrows. This was the twenty five million dollars you were talking about, Angelo uh, Malata. Uh, has sparked concerns that Washington is, uh, this is aid for geopolitical gain. Of course it is. This is all USAID does. That's all they do. They don't actually help develop anything. They are helping you become independent from your central government so that they can foment unrest, civil war, separatism, all of these things that are now happening in the Solomon Islands. These rioters come from a different island that the US is pouring money into to try to separate and divide and destroy the whole country because they're not listening to Washington. And if you go through this, this is the diplomat admitting to all of this. Uh, and Angelo, you found a cable. This is dated 1976, 1976. This is a long time ago. And this was a uh, program for Solomon Islands. And this was them, uh, this, this politician here has since passed away. This was a long time ago, but he was an up and coming and then a prominent politician in the Solomon Islands. And they're talking about just handing him money and getting him on board with, with the US agenda. And it even says down here, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, uh, making, uh, making sure that he is of value to USG, the US government. That's what this is all about. And this is what they do everywhere. This is what we now know because of Wik WikiLeaks, by the way, Julian Assange rotting in jail right now because the West threw him there. Uh, and wh what does it say from the 1970s all the way until right here? This was, I think this article was from last year, 2020. The US is still doing it, pumping money into the Solomon Islands to interfere in their internal political affairs, to co-opt their foreign policy, to try to force them to uh, either pay for the decision to to no longer recognize Taiwan or to reverse the decision. Uh, let's see what else is there. This one, another good one, Angelo, that you you shared. Uh, Taiwan must avoid pouring fuel on Solomon Islands fire. Think think about this. this the Taiwan and the U.S. were were giving all of this foreign aid to the Solomon Islands, acting as if they were helping the Solomon Islands. And every single time uh, that the Solomon Islands disobeyed their dictates and their agenda. What did they do? They attacked their economy. You know, what is China doing? They give some aid. They also do a lot of business. They attack the Chinese businesses that are part of the Solomon Islands economy. So just think about that. They're, they're giving this foreign aid because they're just, just buying obedience. That's all they're doing. And when it's time to punish them, they actually attack the economy. They don't attack anything that they're doing on the Solomon Islands, that's part of the economy because they're doing nothing. They're just dumping money into it. Uh, they attack China. They attack Chinese businesses. Uh, Angela, you have anything else to add to that before I continue? Yeah, I'd like to add one one thing. Uh, you see, uh, the way I see USAID and NED, how they function, uh, it seems like NED, it functions more when uh, it's a developed, more developed country. You know, uh, while uh, USAID is more like uh, uh, it targets poor countries and uh, it's in the form of humanitarian aid. So here you see those 25 millions coming from USAID. And for someone who doesn't know, you, you would assume that this is human, humanitarian aid. And, and it's not. It's not. It's actually, you know, for subversion. And we saw the same in, in Myanmar. Remember, when there was the, the constitution uh, coup by the military of the junta, uh, uh, there was 42 million US dollars that were actually, that were supposed to be allocated from USA to be allocated for, for human, humanitarian aid, which actually was diverted for civil society. When you say civil society, it, it, it means everything. It means, you know, like a regime change. So, so yeah. you see, you see those different functions. USA seems more to be like these guys humanitarian, uh, while NED is more like going directly into NGOs and and, and civil society. Uh, so, so we need to be very careful. And, and you, see, it's interesting to see how they function uh, together. Those two, two, yeah. two NGOs, regime change NGOs. Yeah, uh, well, I, and I, I would also like to say that uh, the NED is very specifically oriented to building up and and backing opposition parties that serve Washington. Yeah. Uh, USAID is very involved in 
kind of targeting impoverished communities and building them up just enough so that they're dependent on USAID money and no longer dependent on the central government to foment unrest, uh, division, separatism, civil war. Uh, so I, I want to point this out. This is in the other diplomat article. And they're talking about how Taiwan just withdrew all of their technical assistance, stopped all of their support for the Solomon Islands when the Solomon Islands switched uh, over to Beijing. Now, think about this. You're you're pretending that you care about the Solomon Islands and you're giving this aid to them because you're a great country. You know, uh, Taiwan pretends it's a country. They pretend that they're a democratic country and they pretend that they're a positive force in the world. This country, Solomon Islands, is not doing what Taiwan wants them to do. So what do they do? Like, like spiteful children, they pack up all their toys and they leave. And they're talking about the withdrawal of technical assistance. Um, I mean, think about that. It's for agriculture. It's for medicine. It's for all kinds of things. And they just, we, you don't want to do what we tell you. We're just going to take all of our toys and go home. It's very nasty. It's really the true face of the administration in Taiwan right now. And really all it is, is like a, a, a mutated appendage coming out of Washington's foreign policy. Uh, just like you mentioned, Angelo, there was a, a no confidence vote and the prime minister survived it. Uh, and he has vowed to continue forward building this relationship with China and, and doubling down on the decision to switch from recognizing Taipei to Beijing. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Angela, you have a anything else you want to throw in? Uh, no, it's just, it's just uh, what we need to, to look at the context uh, you know, of this, this recognition. Now you see, uh, it seems like China, it's... Uh, the gloves are off when it comes to Taiwan. You know, they used to close an eye on all those, you know, banana republics still recognizing Taiwan. I think now the gloves are off and uh, China is going to be much more aggressive. I'm not saying that they are going to, to give sanctions against those, those countries, but they, they'll be much, much more aggressive. You know, they, they, because now there's, uh, you know, Thai, Taiwan, uh, especially now with the DPP, the Progressive Party of Tsai Ing-wen, which is a which is a U.S. puppet, uh, is is being more assertive. And, and why is it why is it pushing for for independence? Just because because the idea is planted by the U.S. and they're pushing for that, it doesn't come from Taiwanese initiative. So I I see this fight. Uh, you know the, this transition of those those countries shifting towards China. To be to be much more aggressive, and, and I, I, I'm expecting uh, two, three more countries uh, following up in the next couple of years. Yeah, definitely. And people have to remember. I, I, I want to point this out here, where <laughs> Sogavari, he is the prime minister of the Solomon Islands, and they're and they're saying he's a controversial figure. Yeah, he is now because he's not doing what the West is telling him. They used to sing his praises when he was pro Taiwan and pro U.S. and taking all that U.S. aid money. He was the greatest guy in the world, and now he's a controversial figure. And I just want people to see this, to see how transparent U.S. foreign policy is and the foreign policy of, you know, Ta Taiwan wants to pretend that it's a sovereign country of some sort. And all it does is, 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 is cling to the, the coattails of the U.S. Everywhere it goes, there you see Taiwan holding, holding the, the coattails of the, the U.S. being dragged along. And so now, now he's not a good guy. Now he's a controversial figure. So here comes the, the character assassination that they always do. They do this to every single leader, every single country that, that's no longer obedient to the West. This is what they do. I want to point out too, um, 200 peacekeepers. This is very dangerous. 200 peacekeepers, uh, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Australia, and New Zealand. This is dangerous because uh, all, all of these foreign troops, especially from Australia, uh, what does that mean? That means if the U.S. can stir up enough trouble, they can justify getting foreign troops, Australian troops, basically. Again, we were just talking about Taiwan being an extension of U.S. foreign policy. So is Australia. And so it's as good as having American troops in the uh, Solomon Islands. If the U.S. can stir up enough trouble, they can justify sending more troops. They can justify basically whatever whatever gains China makes, just shutting it down with a de facto military uh, occupation. What do you what do you think about this, Angelo? Do you see them stirring up? I, you know, because the question is, is this the U.S. punishing them in vain, or is this the first step of a much larger destabilization campaign? 
and could it go as far as Australian troops just ending up in the Solomon Islands indefinitely and barring any sort of progress for, for the island itself and its relationship with China? Uh, well, I would just look at uh, historically, the, that is actually not the first time you have riots uh, in, the, in, the, in the Solomon Islands. Actually, you even had the uh, Chinese actually coming over just to, to save some Chinese because uh, burning Chinatown is not the first time they do that over the years. Uh, so here you can see, I mean, it's a bit worrying, but it would be a, a bit of a stretch to have a, a, an invasion. It would, I think it would draw condemnation. Um, but then, but then, uh, I think the fear of uh, Australia, the biggest fear, is that uh, if if actually China was to have a port, uh, build a port in Solomon Island, and, and if that port was a dual uh, usage, I mean, they, they, of course, Chinese wouldn't do that, especially since uh, it's at the door of Australia. But then, uh, but then, you know, they they would be suspicious, uh, and 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 that that, that would actually. They, they would risk uh, uh, an invasion, you know, or, or not an invasion because there's nothing to invade. I mean, you, an occupation of a few hundred troops there in Solomon Islands, you you, you just control the, the the whole country because because they have, uh, I mean, the police. They, there's no army. Uh, Solomon Island do, doesn't have any army, any and the police are under equipped. So yeah. so you know you can you can actually control the whole country with a few hundred troops. Absolutely. And so that, that would be the, the risk. And you, you have to understand that a lot of what the, the West fears about China, you know, China expanding, China building military bases uh, further and further out. The only reason China is doing this is because the U.S. is literally right off their coast. They're literally right off of China's coast. They have troops in Taiwan, which the U.S. recognizes as territory of China or if you want to be, if you want to uh, pretend that there's some sort of ambiguity there, the U.S. knows that China considers that their territory, and yet they put troops there anyway. So either way, it's bad, and so uh, they do that, and then China has to react to that. That is a direct threat to China's national security, and in in r the realist sense, not when the U.S. says. Uh, Cambodia threatens their national uh, U.S. national security by letting uh, ch Chinese uh, warships use their ports. That's not actually a threat to the, the U.S. It's thousands of miles away from the U.S. What the U.S. is doing to China is a direct threat to China's actual national security of their actual territory. Uh, so that that's one thing to point out. Angelo, you said this was not the first time. They said uh, here they're describing uh, an event that took place in 2006 where 90% of uh, Chinese-owned businesses were destroyed uh, in the Solomon Islands, in the capital, in Chinatown. So it has. It has happened. And uh, that's what I want to I really reiterate this point. The U.S. and Taiwan, they pretend that they're giving all of this aid to the Solomon Islands to help them, but really they're just doing it to control them. And every time they step out of line, they punish them and they do it by attacking their economy. Uh, I want to point out how uh, this, again, I want to really focus on this, uh, imports and especially exports. China, China's buying things from the Solomon Islands. Nobody else is, the, the US and Taiwan are not buying anything from the Solomon Islands. They're just dumping money and expecting obedience. China is buying things. This is, this is a, a way to give the Solomon Islands a future by giving a market to economic activity. The, the US and Taiwan are not interested in that. If you do that, you're helping build the country up. When you help build the country up, you're enhancing its agency, its its sovereignty, its ability to decide for itself and to defend against coercion. This is the last thing the, the US and Taiwan, an extension of the US, this is the last thing that they want. They, they are the expansionists. China is demonstrating openly that they are trying to build these countries up, which, which if China decided to become an expansionist would work against their influence, not in favor of it. Uh, uh, one other thing, you were pointing this also, uh, you were pointing this out also, Angelo. China pays into Solomon Islands Fund as part of diplomatic switch. Uh, do you want to explain a little bit about this? And then I want to kind of expand on this. Um, so basically, this is a fund that was actually established by Taiwan. So it, this was prior to 2019 when there was a switch of recognition uh, from Taiwan to China. Uh, so this fund was actually because the country is so poor, it was it was allocated to fund the the government, and uh, so you had uh, all the prime ministers getting money from that fund, 
And basically what China did was to take over this fund. You know, it's a grant. And uh, so now there's a misinformation from some, from some uh, Western media that is saying that, oh, what well, do you see? We have proofs that China is actually paying politicians. No, no, no. It is actually a fund that was established by Taiwan and China just took over and just a grant just to help the country. I mean, you, you, need, you, need to, you need to understand that the country is so poor. That's a, at some point, you had Australia coming, you know, just pouring in 50,000 US dollars. You know why? Because they didn't have gasoline for, you know, for the boats to, to actually control the, the shores of, of uh, uh, Solomon Islands. You know, they, because, because what, what, the, what Australia is very worried is about immigration from the, the island. So there, there is an agreement, you know, that that Solomon Island need to make sure that there's no no boats, you know, like, uh, you know, in, illegal immigration that is living from Solomon Island. So you see, they don't even have gasoline for their their own boats, you know. It's just so so it's important to see to see. So now imagine uh, when you have 25 million US dollar coming from USAID, you know, uh, like like to to. To put some some fuel on 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 rest, you know, you you can buy rioters, you know, it's easy, you know, you, you give a ten dollars each, you know, and you have a few hundred rioters coming over and, and just burning like Chinatowns. Uh, what I, what worries me is that this what we're seeing here in Solomon Island, we might see it in more places around the world. Well, keep oh, on. You... This, this, there's US AGM, you know, the 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 propaganda. Uh, uh, entity from the US, they, they poured in 300 million US dollar to demonize China on the Belt and Road Initiative. So I wouldn't be surprised that what we saw here in Solomon Island, we could see it more and especially in Africa. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, well, that's that's true as well. And I was also going to say that the whole Milk Tea Alliance, this uh, pan-Asian uh, so-called pro-democracy movement, M Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, you know, parts of it in the Philippines, and they they claim also in in all of these other countries that clearly it's it's not not viable at all. But it's the same thing, but just on a much larger scale, and it's more complicated because a lot of these countries have the resources to kind of fight back against this. But this is what the U.S. does absolutely everywhere. It's just so much more transparent in the Solomon Islands, which is why we wanted to do an entire episode about it uh, today to just show you how transparent U.S. foreign policy is, how disingenuous their interest is in building up other nations where uh, they will dump money into the country to control it. And th at the first sign of disobedience, they will threaten to burn everything down and will burn things down. Uh, I wanted to show, because Angelo, you said there was some, there was some propaganda about uh, China just buying off the Solomon Islands to get them to switch. And where, and where did that propaganda come from? It, it comes from uh, networks like ABC Australia. What does it take for China to take Taiwan's Pacific al allies? Apparently, $730 million. Wow, that sounds very authoritative, doesn't it, this, this headline? But go through the headline. Watch how much uh, writing we have to go through before we finally get to the truth. Uh, right here, while several Chinese and Taiwan media outlets cited the US uh, $500 million aid money, Pacific experts say that figure has not been confirmed. In other words, it was just Taiwan and the US saying this. It's not confirmed, it's not true. It's like everything else they say, they claim it. And uh, if you look at the wording carefully, they never really directly say that that is a fact. And then dozens of paragraphs into the article, they'll finally admit, no, it's not a fact. It's just uh, some rumor. And this is what they do. And, and then they won't talk about any of the other background information that we've talked about. Uh, although The Diplomat is a Western publication and they completely admitted that the US is basically buying off politicians in the Solomon Islands. Uh, it's not like a mainstream publication. It's not something ordinary people are going to read. And so this is very problematic, the, the power of Western propaganda and the, and the fact that they have people out there thinking that the Solomon Islands, they're being taken over by China against their will, as if this is not the break that they've been waiting for for decades to finally get over this inescapable poverty that they've been mired in, this cycle of foreign aid uh, that keeps them dependent on countries like the US, Australia, and their, their subordinates like Taiwan. 
It's kept them. It has kept them dependent on them, and they have had no no real uh, independence of their own. And they face constant the constant threat of being punished through in political instability, separatism, deadly riots. People died. The last round of riots uh, this year, people died. Uh, Angela, anything else? Yeah, I, I'd like to add up one, one thing. I mean, you saw here what happened here in Solomon Islands. They were burning shops in Chinatown. They actually, you know, was they were they, they went in for the for the for killing. You know, some people died there. Uh, so now imagine if uh, those people that were targeted, they were foreign expats, you know, white expats. Imagine the news would be headlines. Oh, this, I mean, they would call it a Holocaust. I mean, you see what is behind the news. It is extremely racist. You know, when you, when you picture death around the world, if they are Africans, if they are Asian, uh, there, there's one type of coverage. But imagine if you have expats in Solomon Islands that are targeted by locals, how the headlines, they would call it the Holocaust. And, and you see, the Western imperialistic propaganda is racist. You know, how, how did they picture the, the one million dead in Iraq? I mean, how, do, how much do we talk about, you know, the human right about, I mean, we talk about real death, not, not you know, like some intangible, you know, like uh, cultural genocide, you know, like all the the BS, the BS that they, they, they're saying about China. So you see, the, uh, what shocks me is really the coverage and, and how Western media, they value a, a, a life differently. If it's a, if it's a Westerner or if it's, an, if it's a local, you know, like Asian or African or, or dark, dark people. Absolutely. I, I, you know, like that's of all the points I was busy making all of these other points That is a, a really good point to make. Like, they're just like, so, oh, so they burned Chinatown down. Uh, they had it coming. You know, they're trying to take over the Solomon Islands. That's basically how they were reporting it. And uh, in reality, like we've we've laid out, I think it's very, uh, by the way, the video that you see, this is from ABC News. And this is uh, just uh, the aftermath because uh, the rioting and everything is pretty much over for the time being. And uh, we have to be really careful. We got to really keep an eye on this now. Uh, yeah. So if it, if it was, uh, if it was some kind of mob that turned out into the streets because the West had some sort of, uh, you know, they made some progress, advancing their foreign policies and people were upset about it and they stormed oh like the libyan the u.s uh, consulate in benghazi in libya you remember that oh they made movies out of that there were movies made out of that and you have to think of how psychotic that all was that was the the u.s's own terrorists turning on them attacking the the consulate in benghazi the 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 rat nest of the the so-called revolution that the u.s sponsored arms and backed to overthrow and destroy Libya, the, the Libyan government, and then destroy the country. And they made entire movies out of that, like um, they were all heroes and these horrible people were attacking them. And uh, now this in the Solomon Islands, it's true, that's a really good compare and contrast between uh, the Western media's coverage of something setting back US foreign policy and something helping advance it. I, I think that's about it, unless there's something else you wanna Add in, no, Angelo, or we can go well, to questions well, and, and answers. Well, just reminding people, people are actually anti-racist. And, and actually, you see when where it doesn't make sense is uh, you, you when you are anti-racist at home, but you are pro-imperialism. You know, I think it doesn't make any sense. You know, I, I'm, imperialism is actually much more racist. I mean, we talk about oppressing lives. It's about, you know, containing development. I mean, you it's about destroying lives. So this is important for people that to, to understand that if you want to be anti-racist, it's good. You know, we need to fight racism, but but you 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 cannot be anti-racist and, and and support imperialism because imperialism is far more racist. It does it kills lives. You know, uh, racism at home it hurts ego. You know, and it's bad. It, it is bad. You have to condemn it. But if you are supporting imperialism. You are actually doing the job of your white masters, you know, because ultimately, you know, it's it's a it's an elite, you know, mostly white, and they they really don't care about the global south, you know. So it's important to see, you know, behind this, there's there's a racist project, you know. It's and it's about and, and it's extremely destructive. 
You know what we're denying those people? Because 90% of the people, pop, world population, is in the global south. And, and the only way to contain, you know, the aggregate economy would be much bigger. So the only way that the West is actually keeping, you know, it, it keeps control of the world is by, by containing the development of, of the, those countries. So how do you do that? Regime change, you know, the, and, and you strip. You, you take all the resources, you know, you don't, you make sure that they're not industrialized. And a, they, they actually do the debt trap, debt trap through World Bank and IMF. So you see, they're they are actually doing what they're accusing China of doing. And when China is not doing that, is actually yes. bringing development, you know, I mean, infrastructure, real infrastructure. I, I, I want to point something out here because uh, we, we've previously talked about the new high speed rail. Uh, going through Laos, so connecting Laos, this landlocked country that is one of the most impoverished countries in in all of Southeast Asia, uh, more bombs dropped on it during the Vietnam War than any other country in history. Um, China built that high speed rail. They cleaned up all all of the U.S. bombs littering the way, and then they built this this railway for Laos, connecting it to the second soon to be largest economy in the world. And also connecting it in the south to Thailand and the rest of Southeast Asia. This is what China did. Uh, I think it was it started in 2006, and they just finished it. So think about the time frame. Look at the Solomon Islands. We showed you the uh, this right here, this cable from 1976. This is how long the U.S. and uh, its partner there, Taiwan, has been working yeah. on the Solomon Islands. What's to show for this? 50 years. What's to show? Yeah, Brian, this is actually a cable between Australia and Canada and and, uh, and the U.S. And basically, they, uh, they you know the stage is uh, identifying which politicians could work. And you have uh, in in this cable, there's actually two different politicians. They say, oh, you see this one actually it's a good one because he he, he speaks English, you know, and uh, and they identify, oh, does he receive already a grant or not? And then you have a second politician an, alter an alternative. So you see those cables. Remember, we had this cable where you had, uh, you know, the communication between uh, the AI AIT, you know, which is the facto uh, U.S. embassy in Taiwan. And you had Tsai Ing-wen just reporting to the AIT in 2004 and saying, well, you know, well, they, they are uh, they, they starting to put me in a, in a special position and so on. And she, she was not even president of her own party back then. So it's yeah. the stage where they identify the politicians and then they do the whole grooming. The same as they did with Aung San Suu Kyi from Myanmar. You know, they, yes. they identify and they say, well, she has a potential. And you can play on different sides. You know, are, are we going to pay that person? Are we going to play on the ego? You know, because, you know, I mean, people like, uh, I mean, Joshua Wong, how did they play? It's a kid. Let's play yeah. it on the ego. Let's put it on, uh, on Times Magazine on the first page. And then, you know, and, and then that, that is how you buy, you buy people, you know, you buy them, they, they become your U.S. agents and they're going to work against their own country because ultimately yes. that, that is what they're doing. When you are accepting one penny from those Western power, you become in an agent, you know, and, and again, you know, National Endowment for Democracy, it's a, it's a replacement, it's a rebranding of a CIA. So imagine how many of those CIA agents. You know, the, the latest one, remember, you know, Rappler, Raza, you know, this journalist, she, got, yes. uh, she just got the, the Nobel Peace Prize. You know, her media, Rappler, was funded by NED, NED, which is yeah. the CIA. So you have actually this journalist in Philippines. She's a she's a CIA agent. Let's call it for what it is. She's a CIA she's, agent. She also has dual citizenship. She's also a U.S. citizen as well as uh, of the Philippines. It's pretty clear where her loyalties lie. Um, if anyone, if anyone has questions, please uh, put like a capital Q or question in all caps, followed by your question, and we'll we'll get to it. Um, I, I just think it's it's really important to to repeat over and over again that uh, that this is what the U.S. was doing in the Solomon Islands for fifty years. The United States and also Taiwan claiming they were helping the Solomon Islands. They're as poor now as they ever have been. 50 years from now, if China is allowed to have a constructive relationship with the Solomon Islands, if the US doesn't burn it to the ground first, in 50 years, do you think they're still going to be this poor and this dependent on foreign aid? Ask yourself that. I think even critics of China would have to say, no, probably not. It probably won't be as bad. Look at 
the U.S. in Afghanistan, 20 years in Afghanistan with complete control over the entire country, with the, the ability to, to kill or, or promote or contribute to anyone in the country and look at where they left Afghanistan as poor or more poor than when they went in. Think about that. Uh, all right, I think we've got some questions. Let me see. There was one I saw scroll by. Uh, uh, how much I... influence? Go ahead, yeah. Angelo. No, I just wanted to say, you know, we, uh, we repeat over and over, you know, what is behind NED and so on. You know, again, I want to repeat one more thing is that this whole meddling and what does it do to democracy, you know, because the problem is that there's, it's about educating people, really, you know, about whenever there's meddling, there's interference, and this goes against democracy because it's democracy is a, is a process of self-determination. Ultimately, every single country, they need, the people need to decide for their own system and their own government. And this is why actually you and I, we're fighting against this because what we want, if, we, if you really cherish democracy, and again, you know, every single country needs to find their own system. But if you respect democracy, not this circus that you have the summit of democracy, you know, it was a circus, it was a circus. If you cherish democracy, number one, you need to protect a country's sovereignty, meaning that you should never have any meddling. So whenever hey, you have this meddling, that, that is when you're going against democracy because then, you know, you hijack democracy and it's no more the democracy. That is that simple. You know, if, if, after, if at the end they, they choose a neo-Nazi government, it, I don't care. As long as there's no, there's no meddling, people need to decide for their own system. But once you start planting ideas to those people, either through subverted media, you know, corrupted media, or through the National Endowment for Democracy, where you have agents, you know, that are working for foreign country, not for your country, that is when you're going against democracy. As simple as that, you know. And and the irony is the only uh, neo-Nazi government right now on earth that I can think of is one sponsored by the U.S. in Ukraine yeah. right now, which is, a, is another... Uh, flashpoint that we have to keep an eye on. So, so someone asked the question, uh, how much influence does the U.S. have on the NGOs receiving NED money, for example, in Thailand? Well, we know in Belarus, when the NED thought they were talking to opposition figures in Belarus, there's a video of Russian pranksters tricking the NED into this video conference call. The NED decides everything. The NED is giving you money and directives and you follow them. And if you don't, you're not getting your money. And they are deciding who's going to end up in power at the end of it if it's successful. This is this is a fact. They've been caught red-handed doing this. Uh, in Serbia, they weren't giving money to Serbia for democracy promotion. They were giving money to Serbia to overthrow Slobodan Milosevic. That was it. It was regime change. And in Thailand, it is the exact same thing. There is a reason why NED-funded outfits in Thailand, like Prachatai, I Law, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, why they're so selective about their reporting. When they talk about uh, violence and they completely ignore what the opposition is doing out in the streets, there's a reason. They're getting paid money to get those people into power. And that's it. It's not democracy promotion. It's regime change dressed up. You can't promote democracy in another country. Democracy is self-determination. If you're interfering in that, you're undermining democracy, not supporting it. You support it in another country by minding your own business. Uh, there's another, Angela, you can throw in it if you want to. I'm going to look for some other questions. If you have anything to add on to that. Uh, well, you know, we, we talked about this information space that's key. You know, this is how you shape the mind of people. You know, you, and especially nowadays you, with social media, imagine you, how dangerous is that? You know, when you have, they are controlling Twitter. I mean, right now, for example, Twitter is working hands in, in hands, you know, with ASPI. You know, ASPI, it's this, this entity in Australia, which is actually, you know, fabricating lots of fake news. And it's, it's uh, who's paying ASPI is the military industrial complex. So now Twitter is working with the ASPI and, uh, uh, and ASPI is actually is saying, well, this, you know, you have to close this account and that account. So you see the directions where we're going is, is uh, it's going to be one side, one side only. The only it's going to be the imperialistic side. So our voices are going to be cut gradually. You know, I mean, yeah. now I mean your channel. You know, I, I wish your channel would stay on. You know, but but, but you know, 
if you look at the direction, the trend and the direction where we're going to, I mean, we'll, we'll be silenced. It is just a matter of time. My account has been suspended quite a few times, you know, and, and we have yeah. quite a few friends. They close their accounts. So the problem is that, the, you know, it's going to be the next stage, going to be information space. They won't allow alternative voices, you know, because it's going to be only one voice. You know, and, and it's, yeah. uh, we are we are at the stage of, you know, the book Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky. I advise people to read that. You know, if you want to have some some of you know understanding foundation on on how the system works, you know, it's planting on the subconscious mind. Keep it, keep hundreds of times hearing China bad, China bad. You know, at the end, you know, it's just you you we are in a bubble. If you don't have a bit of distance, and if you don't have alternative news, then you just be, you know, you start believing unbelievable things. You know, I mean, imagine in one world, World War One, you know, the people believed that Germans were eating babies. I mean, literally. So this is how people, you know, uh, you know, General de Gaulle used to call, uh, you know, he would say, people are cows. You know, that's how that's what what he believed of, of people, you know, because because people don't challenge, you know, they, they don't have time, but they don't they don't challenge what, what the media say. You know, the work we're doing is, is, is very simple. It's just we follow the money. I mean, which media? I mean, what is the money behind this? Which NGO? What is the money behind this? As simple as that. You know, after uh, at the end, you know, people, they can they can make up their mind. But when you, you know that there's money involved, then money is controlled. Yes. And, and you, you are going to have biased information because of money. Yes. And, I, and I've said over and over again that in the 21st century, information space is a sovereign domain. And if you don't control that in your country, your information space, if Twitter and Facebook control your information space, then you don't control your country. It's like having another country running your airspace or controlling your shores or controlling your land borders instead of you doing it yourself. It is unacceptable. And every country in the world needs to get this through their head that this needs to change. You need your own social media platforms for your own people. You need to control the information flowing inside your country. Uh, don't pretend like, oh, well, wouldn't that be, uh, you know, isn't that susceptible to a dictatorship? Of course it is. But if you're not, it's susceptible to a global dictatorship empire. And the U.S. Is, is doing exactly that. They've burned entire countries to the ground using social media to start the start the fire. Uh, uh, by, and, and by I, the I, way, I just saw a message, you know, interesting, you know, a, a comment saying uh, uh, Chomsky wrote manufacturing consent but, and NED wrote manufacturing uh, dissent. That's a pretty good one, huh? Yeah, yes. Um, and by the way, if uh, my YouTube channel ever gets taken down, go to newatlas.report, bookmark it. This is my website. It is not hosted in the US. It would be very difficult for them to take that down. You can go there. You can find all of my articles and videos. If they take down my YouTube channel, I can put videos up on other video sharing platforms and embed them on the website. So if you just check the website every day, you will see all of my work. So it's newatlas.report. The, the website will be in the video description. You can just click on it. Yeah, I use Odyssey to automatically back up all of my videos. And if for some reason Odyssey was taken down, I could find another one and uh, embed it on the website. You don't need to find where I am on these alternative networks. Just find the website and you can find and follow all of my work. So just, just a note. And until then, I mean, we have to just keep encouraging countries to defend their information space and to develop their own social media platforms. Russia and China are doing it right now. You can ask them to help you set up a platform of your own. They export weapons to defend your physical realms. They can export platforms to help you defend your information realm. Um, let's see, there's some other questions. Uh, there was one about uh, after after the Solomon Islands in Nicaragua, who, who will be next to switch over? I mean, You'd, you'd have to look at the list and you'd have to kind of do some research on each country left that still for some reason recognizes Taiwan. And you have to see how much, you have to understand in, in the Solomon Islands, it's not like they, they really wanted to recognize Taiwan. They were being paid on one hand to recognize it and they were being threatened on the other hand that if they didn't, uh, their whole country would be burned to the ground. And 
it is up to China to make the inroads in these countries and give them assurances that they can protect them and they can offer them compensation for the damage that will inevitably be done when they switch sides. And the, when once the balance is finally tipped, of course, they're going to make the common sense decision to recognize Beijing over Taiwan. So you have to look at these countries, whichever one looks like China is making the most inroads in and, and is in the best position to be protected from the fallout of changing. That is the one that will go next. And uh, it's also a good way to tell when they will go because the closer and closer they get, the more likely that will be to happen. Uh, the Solomon Islands, were, they were actually negotiating in secret with many countries, including Australia, in order to do this in hopes of kind of gauging uh, getting a feel of whether you know they would be burned to the ground immediately, or they would be given some time, or get a slap on the wrist that you know just to figure it out. Angelo, you have any thoughts on that? Do well, you have an be, idea of who is next? Uh, I would say maybe Honduras. You know, uh, recently there's a leftist uh, government uh, was elected in Honduras. There could be a, a, another one. Um, just uh, it is interesting this recognition of uh, Taiwan versus uh, China. It's a, you have countries that actually don't have re, a diplomatic relationship with uh, Taiwan, but they want Solomon Island to have a relationship with Taiwan. Yeah, I mean, Australia doesn't have, you know, diplomatic relationship with, with Taiwan. So, so you see, it's like, you know, it, it, you, you go to the fire. Not, I'm not going, yes. but you go to the fire. You know, so it's, it's just ridiculous. And actually, you see, uh, it, it is actually the U.S. that push. Uh, Australia to go against China, and you see. So it's while while uh, while it's interesting. Three percent, three point five percent of uh, Australian export goes to the U.S. You have eleven point five more export Australia export that is going to uh, to to uh, that is going to to China. You know, we're talking about forty percent. So U.S. pushed Australia to go against China, and at the end, you know, the compensation of uh, Lost trade for for Australia, it, it, China started it to buy to buy to compensate with buying from the U.S. So you see, they're pushing each other to the fire. You know, it's like you go, you go fight my war. You know, and yes. uh, ultimately, ultimately, what's the benefit from Solomon Island? What would be? You know, what's the benefit from from Australia? Ultimately, you know, it's like the U.S. playing those divisions. You know. The U.S. is not fighting. They, they don't want, you know, it, it, it's cheaper to have other people to fight their wars. And that's what they want to, to do in, in South China Sea. You know, they want Taiwan to fight their own brothers. You know, it's, so, so yeah. my question is that, are they going to be as dumb to, 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 to fall into the trap? You know, because it's I, just I, stupid. It's just stupid. Yes. Uh, I think we actually probably need to do an episode on Taiwan next week. Uh, there's a lot of things that are starting to kind of one 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 last question, and then we'll we'll wrap up. Uh, Jason is asking about the Summer Institute of Linguistics and Ethos 360. I mean, there are there are millions of or I don't know about millions. I'm it's hyperbole, but there are a lot of organizations out there that have been set up either in parallel to the NED open society and this whole ecos there's a whole ecosystem of fake fronts and and funding organizations uh, running all kinds of programs to culturally colonize the entire planet and uh, you see it working in all all kinds of ways and you could just spend months researching just one of them like say the uh, YSEALI, the Young Southeast Asia Leadership Initiative, uh, run by the U.S. State Department. You could go, you could dig into this forever. Uh, it's so big and so extensive, and this is why you you have to just keep going straight to the source. If you have the and and seriously, if people have the time to research this, start a blog. You could usually find somewhere where you could host it for free, and just. Write, write down your research, put it there so everyone can benefit from it because it is honestly too much for one or a handful of people to do this. We don't have big budgets from, from the NED or George Soros uh, to hire a bunch of staff. I, I wish I had that kind of those resources, but I don't. Uh, Angela and I were kind of doing this on our own and helping each other. And so if everyone out there who was tuning in, if they started a blog and they shared their research there, and they could post a link, like say when we're doing these live things and post a link, I'd be happy to look through that and talk about it in the next episode. That would be really great. Uh, and uh, Angela, I just wanted to say one more thing what, about what you were saying about 
getting the Solomon Islands to jump into the fire for them. And, and Australia, the US, none of them recognize Taiwan. They have no diplomatic relations because they want to cash in on doing business with China. And they're telling the Solomon Islands, no, 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 not you. You you deal with Taiwan. You be their hostage and, and give them recognition. It's so ridiculous. And notice that as soon as the Solomon Islands switched over, all of the aid and all of the friendship, it all ended overnight because it never existed. It was always uh, a case of the West exploiting yet another non-white country somewhere on the map. And uh, now everyone has woken up to the reality that, that that's all it was and that's all the US is doing anywhere. Angelo? Yeah, well, well look at the behavior of, of China. I mean, you know, you, you compare. So there's no more, uh, you know, there's a switch of recognition, then they stop completely aiding the country. Uh, China was doing huge business. Over 50% of, of uh, uh, Solomon Island uh, export were going to China 10 years before the recognition. You can see this is factual. You know, if you if you go back to 10 years ago, you know, you had 50, you see here, 54 2008. So yeah. basically China, they were very smart. It's not coercion. You know, we do business. And it's actually, it go, it's going to be naturally. It's, you know, at the end, I mean, Solomon Island, you, you know, it's an anomaly. You're doing 50% of your trade with China, and then you recognize a province that belongs to China as being the, you, you know, your diplomatic contact when it comes to China. You know, it's, it's just an anomaly. It just doesn't make any sense. So you see, China is not about coercion. You know, I would see coercion on, on the opposite side, where you are actually recognizing China, and then you switch to Taiwan. And I think that's, that would be the case of Lithuania. You see, Lithuania, yes. they switch, yes. and they switch especially now. You know, that's a sensitive time. Remember, now I think when it comes to Taiwan, you know, I think gloves are off. China is going to be extremely aggressive there. You know, I mean, it's very simple because this touches national sovereignty. You know, if it, if it happens with the U.S., imagine a single moment, you know, if, if China was, you know, financing movements in California, for California secession. I mean, just just try to do some examples on the opposite side. It would be yeah. unthinkable, unthinkable. Uh, China trying to, to put an army base, uh, you, you know, in Cuba. Just imagine, you know, so, yeah. so it's, it's all about this hypocrisy. You know, we need to understand, you know, China's position and also Chinese history, you know, 100 years of humiliation. You know, you had uh, 150 years ago, you had eight countries, you, you know, taking territories from China. Imagine a single moment that if this happened to your country. So yeah. China is extremely sensitive. You know, the only piece that is missing from China is Taiwan. So don't just don't touch it. You know, it's the it's a red line. You know, every country has a red line, you know, and, and they need to understand that Taiwan is 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 uh, you, it's non-negotiable. Exactly. And and just like you said, the Solomon Islands were were all over that red line. And yet China was still buying their products and it was their primary export market. So it just goes to show you uh, what, what China values. They, they value business. They value prosperity. And just like they always say, mutual benefit. Obviously, the Solomon Islands, look at this. Obviously, they were benefiting from this. Uh, in 2008, and and all you know, just go anywhere on here, and you 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 will see. Like 10 years ago, it's the same story. It's just so much being sold to to China, even though at the time the Solomon Islands were one of the few countries on Earth that just completely crossed the red line in regards to Taiwan. And so uh, it's it is just really illustrates how, how you, China versus how the U.S. claims it acts on the global stage and how it actually acts versus how the how the U.S. and Taiwan responded when they didn't get their way and they they literally tried to burn the Solomon Islands to the ground. Angelo? Uh, well, uh, ways, uh, you see this uh, export, you know, like a structure of, uh, uh, of Solomon Island. I'm asking, where is the closest neighbor, Australia, here? You, you don't see it, you know. If you are a good neighbor, you buy, you know, you trade with Solomon Island. Why? Because you want Solomon Island to be prosperous. You know, if, if you really care about your neighbors, that's what China is doing. You know, China is building infrastructure between China and its neighbors and it's trading. Here you have in 2019, Australia buy nothing. Less you know, than 1%. I mean, even tourists, you know, you don't even have tourists from Australia going to Solomon Island, you know, and, and, and Solomon Island 
it, it's just like uh, two hours by boat, you know, from Australia, you know. So if you really care about the Solomon Island, you see how close is that? And, and Solomon yeah. Island is one of the poorest country in the world. So Australia is so rich. Why don't you help your neighbors? They don't because it's about containing development. Keep them yes. poor, you know. And if there's any res resources, well, we will find a way just to, to take your resources. And, uh, you know, Australia will always say, well, we give them the most foreign aid. Foreign aid and actually helping are two different things. Foreign aid, especially when a country is doing it, this is just uh, uh, one of the methods of exercising control over somebody and keeping them dependent, uh, building them up so that they don't need foreign aid. That is actually helping. This is what China plans to do uh, for the Solomon Islands, for Laos, who just got their first railway after the U.S. dumped bombs on them all last century. And uh, so this is the way the world is going. We're going to continue keeping an eye on it. Angelo, thank you very much for joining me once again. This entire episode would not have been possible without Angelo and his expertise and uh, getting all of these links together. So thank you again, Angelo. Thank you, everyone who has joined us live. And if you're watching this afterwards, please like and uh, share it. Look in the video description below. You can find ways to uh, follow our work, my, myself and also Angela. All, all of the links are there. And until next week, thank you very much and bye for now.